Amen. Thank God that we can lay our burdens on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, He's able to sustain us. Amen. Bible says, cast all your burdens upon the Lord. Amen. He wants us to give it to Him. He wants us to unburden yourself and give it all to the Lord and let Him be the one that gives you victory over all, all those things. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's going to bless us with a beautiful week this week. We won't claim it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> all right. And so we pray that God will continue to, to, to bless us and help us in everything we do. But this time we'll receive the offering for the Sunday evening service. Marvin, would you help us tonight? Pray that God will bless. Bless you as you give and support his work. Will you please pray, sir? Thank you. Father, thank you for this opportunity to give us God's program. Father, bless the gift according to the gift according to his giving. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Given tonight, you're up. she wants to know if you want to. She want you want her to sing one more song. <laughs> so I said, sure. I've spoke to you guys. So. <laughs>
of the King and claim your place. We're talking about in the Bible study, know your place, <laughs> right? In God, know your place in God. That you are indeed, if you're a Christian, you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You believe that wonderful gospel of Christ dying on the cross for our sins, rising again from the dead, ascended back into heaven. You confess your sins to Him, ask Him to forgive you of all your sins, and you invite Him into your heart and receive Him as your personal Lord and Savior. Then guess what? You belong to God. Amen. You're part of the body of Christ. You're part of the body of Christ, and like I share, you know, we care about our bodies. We're not going to harm our own bodies, right? Anybody here like to harm their body? You like to go and get a hammer and get your finger and say this stupid finger, bam, bam, you know, and just, no, we don't do that. We don't do that. And God is not in the business of harming his body. God loves us. Now, there are times when he allows things to come to our life for various reasons, and um, in time we'll find out, as the song said, by and by we'll understand it, by and by. But it doesn't mean that the Lord does not care about his people. Amen? Amen. He is the shepherd. He cares about the sheep. He cares about each and every one of us. He loves us. And I said it before, and I'm going to say it again. Satan is a liar. Amen? He's a liar. He's the father of all lies. And so when you bring those lies and try to lie to your mind, cast down those imaginations, push him away. The Bible says resist him. And he will flee from you. Right? Resist him and he will flee from you. And so tonight I want to read to you from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 17. We'll read verses 1 through 8. And I mentioned some of this this morning. It's amazing how Sunday morning I mentioned something and then preach about it Sunday night. <laughs> right? Maybe at least one verse of scripture. But he said, And after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment as white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here, if thou wilt. Let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. And while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Pleased, hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only, or except Jesus only. And I want to use verse 4 as our text for tonight. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. And using that part where he said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. And with the help of the Lord tonight, just for a short while, I just want to preach in a message entitled, Staying on Top of the Mountain. Staying on Top of the Mountain. Marvin, would you please pray, sir? Father, thank you for our pastor. Father, thank you for each soul that's present. Father, touch each one heart according to the universal need. Father, let us take this message, apply it to our lives, and do all things pleasing in your sight, giving you the honor and glory. Father, bless the message and the messenger in Christ's name. Amen. 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 I want to just preach for a little while on staying on top of the mountain. And this, of course, this was a physical mountain that he took them up in, in, um, in Jesus' days. He took the, the three disciples and they went up on top of the mountain. And if you read the Gospel of Luke, he said Jesus began to pray. And as he was praying, he began to change. You know, prayer does change things. You know, and prayer caused everything to change about us. And so, it was a physical mountain. 
But it shows us something uh, that can, we can relate to. Not necessarily we will go up on a physical mountain. But it shows us something in the life of a believer that there will be times in our life when God, in a sense, will take us up on the mountain. Amen? He took Moses up on the mountain in the Old Testament and he showed him all the promised land. He said, look, see all this land I will give you. Right? And he, so he took him up on the mountain and showed him, he showed him, said, this is all. He said, Moses, you're not going to go in, <laughs> but I just want you to see it. Right? And there was a reason why Moses wasn't going to go in. Because, um, you know, there's some symbolism with the names and stuff like that. Joshua ended up taking him in and everything. But he took him up on the mountain. And so I'm saying there's times in the life of a believer where God will bring us up a little bit higher. Amen. Where God will take us from where we are to the next level. And that's a good place to be. That's a good place to be. And once he takes us to that level, <laughs> we just want to stay there. Amen. We just want to bask in the presence of the Lord. Even Moses in the Old Testament also, when he came out and he was leading the people and, and received all the revelations and stuff from God, nevertheless, the Bible said the Lord took him up, remember? And he claved that, that hollow spot in the side of the cliff and he placed him in there and, and he passed before Moses. But he, put, he placed his hand so Moses will not see the fullness of the glory of God. And so when he, after he passed, he removed his hand and, and Moses saw the, the back part of God, he saw the glory. He saw the, some of the glory of God. He got to see a little bit of the glory of God. And this sufficed him. It was sufficed. It was wonderful to experience. And, and even though he had so many different uh, revelation and experience, uh, God nevertheless took him a little bit higher. Right? He took him a little bit higher. And that's what we're seeing here with these disciples, Peter, James, and John. These were men that had been with Christ for a long time. they have been... Traveling with him, Jesus called him in the beginning of his ministry. And they've been with him. He taught them. They were there when he turned the water into wine. They were there when he did small miracles of healing and great miracles of healing. And so they were there traveling with him, preaching the gospel. And all these wonderful things were happening in their life because they were following Jesus. But he got to this place where Jesus said, all right, it's time for the next level. I recall in fighting, level change, <laughs> right? You got to throw a little fight and stuff in there, right? If you're not winning one, you got to do a level change to win, right? And so he took them to the next level. He took them up on the mountain, and, and, and this was, was, was not easy because they had, to, they had to climb. They had to put forth effort. I don't know how high, the, how high the mountain was. Evidently, it had to be high enough because other people would have seen stuff from beneath or wherever it was that he took them. But he took them up on this mountain, and, and the Bible said he began to pray, and as he was praying, he, all of a sudden, Jesus began to shine with the glory. And, and our Bible reading said here, his face, he said his face shines so bright like the, the, the sun, right? He said there, um, verse 2, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as light. Think about what they were seeing here in this next level. You see, when you get to the next level, things are a little bit different, right? Here they were walking with Jesus. They're seeing Jesus in his natural form. They're seeing Jesus, the man, Christ Jesus. They're witnessing his power. They're seeing that he can heal leprosy. He can heal diseases. They're seeing that he can cast out demons. He can walk on water. He can cause the, calm the raging sea. He can do all this stuff in his natural form. But when they got up on the mountain, they began to see him in a different light. As they were up on the mountain, they began to see him like they'd never seen him before. They saw his face like the sun. Think about the brightness of the glory of Christ. They're looking at this man that they knew, that, that, that they admire and worshipped. And now they're seeing him shining with glory. Beautiful, brilliant, glowing with the glory that he had before he came to this world. And then they saw his clothes just like light. The Bible said God is clothed with light. Amen. And they're seeing him in his glory. And, and then all of a sudden they began, while I was there, and they, they saw this man that I was talking about, Moses, who had seen the glory of God. They see Moses standing there. And like, what in the world is going on here? See, next level is a different story. Getting up a little bit higher from the daily Walk with God is a different story. You see different things. You hear different things. You experience different things. Right? Because when you get up on the mountain, things begin to change. I'm talking about spiritually now. When you climb a little higher in Jesus, uh, it's not going to be that same old experience. 
you're going to feel the presence of God more in your life. You will feel the closeness of God more in your life. There are times, man, you just sit down and not even thinking about it. All of a sudden, you feel the unrushing of the Holy Ghost. All of a sudden, you feel the presence of God right there with you. You know you've been on the next level because you've been praying, because you've been walking with God, because you've been committing yourselves to the Lord and placing yourself, you know, closer and closer to God. And you can be in your car driving and the Spirit of God is there. You can just whisper the name of Jesus and the Spirit of God is there. You can be in your work and you're talking to people and you're having a conversation with them and they don't even know what's going on. All over you, you're feeling the Spirit of God just coming down. And, and they don't even know your fellowship with God as you're listening to them and sometimes tuning them out too. But, but you know, you just fellowship with God and they don't have a clue that you're in the power and the presence of God. That's next level. Amen. Next level. And when you get there, you just want to stay there. You don't want to leave that place of fellowship. You don't want to come down from that mountain. And that's what Peter, he said he was up there and he saw Jesus in his glory and then he saw Moses. And then he went back, he saw Elijah, this man of God, you know how great and wonderful things he did. The one that called fire down from heaven. The one that uh, stopped the, the rain from falling for three and a half years. This great prophet of God that slay all the, the false prophets of Baal. Y'all know that story, right? This man, Elijah, that outrun a chariot, Right? This man that he read so much that called fire down and consume the, 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 the captain and their armies. These guys, Peter and James and John, they're looking at this man. They've never seen him before. But here they're on the mountain seeing Jesus glorified, seeing Moses, the one that gave them the law and brought them the laws of God and all and established their nation in so many ways. And they're seeing this mighty prophet of God that, that was caught up in the chariots, right? He didn't even see death. He walked with God and he said, and the Bible said the Lord just took him straight to heaven, right? And they're seeing, the, they're seeing this man right there and they're talking to Jesus. And then all of a sudden as, they were, as, the, as, as, as all this is going on, this cloud came over them. We talked about it a little bit this morning. This cloud came over them. And now think about this, right? They're watching Jesus. And they're watching Elijah. They're watching Moses. And they're, they're like, man, this is cool. This is awesome. And he said, Lord, Lord, we can make, we can set up some tents right now. I don't know what Peter was thinking. Maybe he thought there was a Home Depot up there or something, you know. He can just go and buy all the material and set up some tents or, or cut on some trees. He didn't have anything. Well, you're saying, we can build some tabernacles, Lord, whatever it takes. I'm willing to do it. I'm on the mountain. I'm in a good place with God. I do not want to come down. I don't care what I have to do. I have to go, what, what work I have to put in. I just want to build some tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elias. And I will just sleep out here. It doesn't matter. I will just lay on the ground and sleep as long as I'm on the mountain with God. Amen. As long as I'm in that place where I'm experiencing the fullness of the glory of God, that's where I want to be. I don't want to come down from this wonderful experience. This God is, God is showing me all these wonderful things. I don't want to miss any of it. Let me stay in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And as they were doing that, and, and, and he was gazing, and notice they didn't panic. They didn't panic at all. They're just marveling. Moses, Elijah, Jesus, glorified. And all of a sudden, that cloud came over them. And they heard the voice of God. And the Bible said they fell to the ground. Amen. When daddy speaks, right? when, when God the Father began to speak, when God the Father began to call out to the cloud, and I can just imagine what was going on. It was it the loudness and the power of the voice of God, right? What was it that caused them to tremble? What was it that caused them to become afraid? They were seeing things that they've never seen before in Jesus and in Moses and Elijah. But once they hear the Father spoke, they said, oh my goodness, hit the ground, guys. This is something different. It was the authority of the voice of God because the Bible spoke concerning the voice of God. He said, whose voice then shook the mountain? Amen. I wonder if that mountain quake as God the Father came over. I wonder the, the power of the voice that spoke when he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Amen. God was telling them, Jesus is the one I want you to listen to. We talk about this morning. 
He was pointing them to Jesus. Yes, you had Moses of old. Yes, you have the prophets Elijah. But now I'm telling you, this is the one you listen to. Listen to Jesus. Listen to the one that bring you the gospel of grace. Listen to the one that brings you salvation. Listen to the one that will deliver you from the power of darkness and bring you into the kingdom of light. Listen to the one that have the ability to transform your life and make you a brand new creature. Listen to Jesus. Amen. Amen. And as Peter and them were on the mountain, we said, I want to come down. <laughs> no, no, Lord Jesus is way too good. It's way too wonderful. I don't want to leave this place. It's such a blessing to be up here. And that's what I'm talking about to now. When you get up to that next level in your relationship with God, you know, there are times we're walking and we're walking. It seems like we're going through the valley of the shadow of death, right? Sometimes you got to fight off all these temptations and laziness and that. You just got, it's like you throw one off and another one latch onto you, right? And you shook another, you shook another one off and another one grab a hold of your leg. And you're just dragging him through the valley. But, it, but you will get through, right? You will get through that valley, okay? Just keep going forward. You will get through that valley, and then you'll get to that place, that next level in your, in your walk with God. Every Christian will get to that next level if we keep moving forward. Every one of us will get to that place where we'll, we will begin to feel what I'm feeling, right? That closeness of Lord. Feel the presence of God. Feel that wonderful, that, that where you say, man, God, you're right here. You're right here with me, Jesus. It's good for me to be in this place. It's good for me to be here. And when you get to that place, you will have the same attitude of Peter. Lord, I don't want to come down from this place. I don't want to come down from this mountain. It's way too good up here. It's wonderful up here. I'm seeing God. I'm hearing God. I'm experiencing God. I don't want to leave. I want to stay right on top of this mountain. I want more. Give me more, Jesus. Give me more of your grace. Give me more of your love. Fill my life, oh God. Here's my cup. I lift it up, Lord Jesus. Let it overflow with the goodness and the glory of God. Oh, when you're, when you're on top of the mountain, you don't want to come down. I'm talking about staying on top of the mountain. As you walk with the Lord and you pray and you get to that place, and you will know as a Christian, you will know when you're in that place. You, will, you won't want to come down either. You got to say, Lord, it's good for me to be here. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you get on your knees and pray and you have a breakthrough. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you're praying and your words are hitting the ceiling. You know what I'm talking about? Because all this stuff going on, but well, you break through. And you just want to keep praying. I'm praying. I'm praying. You don't want to give up. You don't want to leave. I got to do, forget that. Let's pray. Amen. And you're talking to God and you're praying it through. And that's what I'm talking about. You get into that place where you're breaking through and you're getting to that next level in God. And you say, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. Just keep on. Keep on keeping on. Okay. Keep on keeping on. Yes, there will be a lot of things that will try to latch on to you and pull you down and hold you back and keep you down. It's just part of the fight. But the Bible says, shake off those things, right? Cast off, cast off those works of darkness. All those things that are trying to hold you down, cast them off. All those things that are trying to slow you down, cast them off. Lay aside the weight. Lay aside the sin. Put all those things to the side and get to the next level. Get to that mountaintop with Jesus. Get to that place where you're seeing the glory of God. Now, I'm not saying necessarily you will see the physical glory of God, but as Christians, we know when we're experiencing the true glory of God. We know when we are, when we are fellowshipping with closeness and we understand, man, I am here in God's presence. I'm here in the power and the presence of God. And we know when we get to that place, and you will, you will, amen, you will get to that place as you continue to, to move forward in the Lord. Peter, James, and John. They got a glimpse of eternity. They got a glimpse of resurrection. They got a glimpse of what it's like to be glorified. You know, the Bible said when we see Jesus, we'll be just like him. All right? God will give us a glorified body, and we will see him. For he said, as he is, so we'll, we'll see him as he is. For as he is, so, so are we, right? And we'll see him, and, and they're, you know, maybe they're looking around and say, man, I'm, I'm going to look like that. You know, some of how humans think, you know, experience something and you start wondering in your mind, is that what it's going to be like? My face going to shine? No cocoa butter? I'm going to shine? <laughs> no coconut oil? <laughs> I'm going to glow? We had this one guy back where I grew up and, and they love to put coconut oil on their hands and stuff. 
here and face. And he'll walk out in the noonday sun. He'll shine. That boy be glowing with a coconut oil, man. <laughs> Skin be glowing. Well, we don't need coconut oil when we get to heaven. God's going to give us a glorified body. Amen. Amen. God's going to give us a glorified body and we will shine with the glory of God. That's what we're working towards. We're working towards heaven. There is a better place that awaits us. And, and Peter and John was experiencing this. They're seeing the glorified Moses. They're seeing the glorified Elijah. They're seeing the glorified Christ. And now they're hearing the voice of God the Father. And they're like, man, whew, can it get any better than this? Can we really get any better? Can it really get any better than this? And then they say, he said, I don't want to come down. And I don't know if I should preach any longer. I don't want to come down. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still in the Bible reading. I haven't got to the message yet. I'm still in the Bible reading. But, but, but we're not going to belay the point, right? We get to that next level. You come. We get to that next level in God. And, and let's take this to heart. You get to that next level in God. It's going to be good. Amen. It's going to be so good. It'll be like your mountaintop experience with God. You get to that next level in Jesus. You're going to be on top of the mountain experiencing God like never before. And you will have the same attitude. Lord, I don't want to come down. I don't want to leave this place. I don't want to walk away from this. This is so good. This is so wonderful. I am hearing things that I've never heard before. They never heard the Father spoke. This was the first time they heard the voice of God the Father. And Peter never forgot that. He wrote in his in his letter saying this voice we heard amen he said we heard that voice that stayed with him for the rest of his life he heard the voice of the father they experienced things they have never experienced before like i said the resurrection the eternal life the glory of god they saw things they've never seen before because jesus brought them to another level he brought them to another level and tonight god can bring us as we press on in our christianity as we lay aside all those things that can hinder us and keep us from moving forward. As we lay aside all the battles and just say, forget all that stuff, let me focus on Christ. Let me focus on Jesus. He's the one that saved me. He's the one that, 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 that is living in me. Let me focus on Him. He will bring us to that next level in Him. And when we get there, it's going to be so good. We're going to be like, Lord, let's just set up some tabernacle here. Let's just stay on top of the mountain for a little bit longer. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. How many of y'all want to stay on the mountain with Jesus? Amen. Let's lift our hands and worship the Lord. She's going to sing, Lord Jesus, tonight. Bring us a little bit higher. Bring us to that next level in you, O oh God, I pray. Let us, O oh God, trust in you to move to the next level in our walk with you, God, where we can experience the fullness of the glory and the power of God. Lord, your presence is here tonight. We just want to give you praise and glory, God. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you will do in our life as we move forward from this day, from this day forth, O oh God. We're asking you, Lord, to be close to us and help us to draw closer to you. We're asking you, Lord God, to take us to that next level in our Christianity, to where we can hear, we can see, and we can experience you like never before. Lord, we give glory and honor to you. We thank you. We worship you tonight. And now, Lord, as we turn the service over to prayer and to worship, we just ask that you will bless tonight. Meet with each and every one of us here, those in line that are worshiping with us, God. You know the needs of all your people. You know what each and every one of us have need of. And I just pray tonight, God, that you will bless. I pray tonight you will touch hearts and lives. I pray you will meet needs in the lives of those that believe and trust in you, God. Oh, we give you glory. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Go ahead and play. She's going to sing. We can spend some time in prayer. The altar is open. Do whatever you like tonight. Let's call on the name of Jesus. As she's saying, we will worship the Lord. Amen. Go ahead.
We love you. We worship you. We're almost done. She's going to sing us one more song. We'll leave the service. Is glorifying our Heavenly Father, thanking Him for all that He has done for us. We just pray that God will continue to bless. God will continue to work in our life and help us as we trust in Him and believe in Him and give Him praise. Yeah, go and sing. She's going to sing. We'll close out one more song, right? But what I want you to do tonight is take your liberty in worshiping the Lord.
love you. Thank you, God. You're so awesome to us. We praise you and worship you. We give you all the glory tonight. Thank you for this wonderful experience in you, God, that we can get to the next level in our Christian walk. There's so much more that God has in store for all of us. We love you. We ask God you continue to bless each and every one here tonight. And those that worship with us online, be with all of us. Protect us. Keep us strong. Keep us healthy. Keep us safe in your grace. Bring us back again to the appointed time to worship and praise and honor you. We love you and appreciate you. In the name of Jesus, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Whew. <laughs> Water. <laughs> what? Uh...